Hi guys, this is Aspa Mushtaq from the Double E Vibes, and in this lecture, you will learn how we can design a given uh, how we can design a sequential circuit given the information in the phrasal form or in the verb form. So, let's say we want to design a particular circuitry that detects the number of ones in the string of an input or in the input string of ones and zeros. And whenever we will encounter three consecutive ones or more than three consecutive ones, the output should be equal to zero. And if you are getting only one, if you are getting zeros at the input side, the output should be equal to zero. Okay, uh, the design procedure of a sequential circuit involves these particular steps that I have written right here. You have to first of all, drive a state diagram for it for the given information from the given information you will be driving a state diagram then you will reduce the number of states if possible after reducing the state you will assign the binary codes to these particular states and you will obtain the coded state table for that or for the given states after that you will have to choose the type of the flip-flop that you will be using for this design procedure and once you are done with the state table description you will be determining the input equations state equations and the output equations possibly and at the end once you are having the equations you can draw the logic diagram of that particular sequential stir circuitry okay so let's say we wish to design a circuit that detects a sequence of the three or more consecutive ones in a string of the bits coming through an input line. The input line is a serial bit stream. You can say that. Fine. So for the particular given information, we need a reset state. I'll name it as S0 state and it is written as the reset state. Being in the reset state, if this zero input arrives, if you get this zero input, then the output should remain zero. Fine. And being in the S0 state, if the input arrives one, then you will move to the next state. I'll mark it as S1 state. Okay. And the output still remains zero. Why? Because it will be activated or it will be set to its value, uh, to value 1 whenever we will be having three consecutive ones in the input string fine since one number of ones has arrived fine we will check the next state if it is equal to 0 if you get this 0 input again fine you will go back to the reset state again starting the counter again and giving the output equal to zero okay and once you have received one in the input stream you will go to the next state for counting the next arriving bit if it is equal to one you will generate output is equal to zero why because two consecutive ones have arrived one and one and if at this point again if you encounter 0 you will go to the reset state giving output is equal to 0. So if 0 input arrives you will go into the 0 state and give the output equal to 0. Since 1, 2 and let's say the third consecutive one arrives. You will go to the next state that is represented as S3 and it is actually happening when you are in the s3 at that point you will get output is equal to one fine and you will again check the next input sequence at this moment if you will get the input is equal to one then you will again remain in that state showing the output is equal to 1. But if the input is 0 is arrived, 
you will reset the output equal to zero and you will go back to the reset state so this is the state diagram of this particular problem so far i have not assigned the codes to these states it is clear that at least there are four possible states required that's why it means i need two flip flops why because two flip flops will be representing the two bits of each state okay so we have actually determined the state diagram for this particular circuitry the next step is to construct this state table for this okay if i do assign the state 0 the code of 0 0 then state 1 is assigned as 0 1 state 2 is assigned as 1 0 and finally state 3 is assigned as 1 1 these are the code assignments to these particular states okay and the input is only one bit that's why this state table will be represented like that here a and b are representing the present states of the flip-flop and x is the input of this string or the string input fine i have written the three bit binary code or binary possible combinations for this and the next state being in the zero zero state i will use the same information if the zero arrives we will remain in the reset state and being in the zero zero state if one arrives we will move to the zero one state fine being in the zero one state if the zero arrives you will again go to the reset mode and being in the zero one state if one arrives you will go to the next state which is actually one zero then being in the one zero state if zero arrives you will go to the reset state and being in the one zero state if the one arrives you will go to the one one state fine and being in the one one state if the zero arrives you will go to the reset state and if the one is arriving you will remain in this state because three consecutive ones one two and three must have arrived so this is the final state corresponding to that you will get the output as long as there are not three consecutive ones at the input side you will be getting the output is equal to zero so i can quickly fill this column using this information and obviously it will be equal to zero once three ones have arrived you can mark the output is equal to one so using that information actually i have constructed this state table for this fine now what's the next step the next step is to determine the state equations and the output equations fine you can see here the function of a of t plus 1 can be simplified using the Carnot map principle so three variable k map can be used for determining the expression of a b of t plus a of t plus 1 b of t plus 1 and y okay so right here i'll just place the mean terms for a of t plus 1 we are getting the one corresponding to the mean terms 0 1 2 and 3 so 0 1 2 and 3 1 is placed right here then 3 4 5 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 and finally 6 and 7 in this way you can see we have placed the mean terms and d of a or the output of the first flip flop would be equal to a into x plus bx fine similarly i can write down the output equations for the second flip-flop and the output function similarly d of b is equal to we can combine these two terms giving us a and x then plus b complement x and finally y is obtained as a into b all right so these are the output equations for the flip-flops obviously uh, uh, we can use the d flip-flop right here for this expression as we can see the next output is the 
determined is determined as the combinational parts okay when you will go to the design procedure you need to d type flip flops for that this is the first d flip flop and it's the second d flip flop okay mark it as a and it its output is marked as b the next step is to take one input x okay and you have to xor it with a sorry and it with a so i will take a input and then x input and i will end it fine similarly i'll take b input and again x input and i will end it and finally they two will be or together to generate the inputs of this first flip flop da similarly we will have to do ax since we are already having or we have evaluated ax right here i need to just take the b complement into x since this is the b complement so i will just take it and can and it with x giving me b complement x and right here we have evaluated ax so i can take it out from here and we can or it for getting the input of the second flip flop which is the d flip flop and finally we can evaluate the output function y as the or of a and b so a and b can be or together for giving the output function y so this is the simply fired or the final form of this sequential circuitry you were just given the information in terms of the statement and you finally translated it into the logical diagram thank you for watching if you have any question you can drop the questions in the comment section